In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of binary search trees. And before we discuss binary search trees, we're going to first introduce the idea of a binary tree, which you have almost certainly seen before. We saw them in heaps, and you will have seen them in your software series, and likely even in your Foundations 1 class. So, what is a binary tree? Well, a tree is a directed acyclic graph, which is not the most helpful way we understand trees. Typically, we understand trees as something with a root node, like what we have here. And then it has children. In particular, a binary search tree has at most two children. So this has two children. You can also have one child like this node, or you can have two children like this node, or zero children like those nodes down there. We say that every single node except the root has one parent. That is the thing above it in the tree. The parent for the root node is going to be some null pointer that points up. And every node with no children, this node, this node, and this node, are all what we call leaf nodes. And with that in mind, the height of a tree is going to be the length of the longest path from the root, which is here drawn at the top, down to a leaf. So the longest path here is one, two, three, four. So the height of this tree will be four. In some programming instances, you may use a different definition of height because you don't want that a tree with one node, a tree like this, with one node V, with no children, that has one leaf, one root, and no children anywhere. This has a height of zero in our definition which is maybe not ideal in certain programming circumstances. So sometimes you'll say that as a height of one and you'll count the number of nodes in the path along this path here. And that's one, two, three, four, five. So there are different notions for height. We're using the more mathematically inclined definition here. So that's what a binary tree is. There is one different type of binary tree we've discussed already in our discussion of heaps, which is a complete binary tree. A complete binary tree has two properties, both of which are essential for making it complete. The first one is that every internal node has exactly two children. Let's look at this, and we have every single node has two children. Why is this not enough? Let's try see if we can draw a tree that breaks this. So if we had the following tree, here's the root. It has two children. This has two children. This has two children. This has two children. And looking at this, this tree is definitely not complete. It is missing many, many nodes. We would hope that this entire part of the tree down there would be complete, but it is not. So this definition is not sufficient on its own. And let's check if the other definition would be sufficient. The other part of the definition is all of the leaves are the same distance from the root. Can I draw a tree that breaks our understanding of complete with that? Well, that's kind of easy too. I can draw a tree like this where I have no children except on the left. There is exactly one leaf here. It is this node down here and it is equal distance from the root. And this is actually about the worst I could get, the furthest I could get from a complete binary tree. So neither of these on their own is going to be enough for a complete binary tree. We're going to need to include both to make our definition sufficient. So let's get rid of this picture. We don't need it. Now, we also know one nice thing about this, which this is our ideal circumstance in terms of the height. We saw this when we were analyzing heaps. We talked a bit about complete binary trees there. We know that the height is at least log of n from our study we did in our heaps. So this is effectively our best case for our algorithms that will involve the height in some way. And we'll see this as we're working through most of our algorithms. The height will play a critical role in the runtime of those algorithms. 